Hi, today I want to share with you how to draw roses or how I practice drawing roses freehand. I've been practicing Japanese toe painting for many years and as you may know, the Japanese style is quite meticulous. You have to um, trace the pattern and uh, the placement of the petals are all nearly the same every time which will make the, um, the, the flowers look uh, somewhat stiff and uh, mechanical and uh, the, flower, the, the roses will look almost the same even in one single painting. And recently I've been practicing freehand painting and I finished this teaser box. This was the first, first one I painted. No, this one the second. And then this is the third, the fourth, and also some on the top. But uh, actually I was just lucky because uh, at the time of drawing, I didn't know how each flower would turn out. I just placed uh, the petals haphazardly. Then I really realized that uh, I had to uh, come up with an organic way of petal placement that is different every time but failure proof. I began with practicing drawing. I chose three photos which I thought were pretty in terms of the whole shape of the flower and the shapes of and arrangements of individual petals. For some photos, um, the flowers look pretty, but uh, there are too many petals, and uh, for some, the angles are awkward. So these are the three that I chose. Then I numbered the petals. I will start with the petals around the center. The petal right in front of the center will be number one. This goes against the Japanese one-stroke painting style. As they usually draw, paint the petals at the back first, like the one here and the one here. They were the styles of uh, different uh, Japanese uh, toe painting masters, but uh, they are but quite similar in, in you know, painting the roses. But I think the size and position of the, this petal dictates the placement and sizes of other petals, and hence the overall look of the whole rose. Like this one. And there are two at the front here, and also two here. If you don't number them, you may lose track along the way. Then I memorized the shape and position of each petal through repeated drawing. Not only did I um, memorize the position of the petals, but also the ruffles, like uh, how uh, the, if there's a dent or the ruffle or a fold. It's just like building your vocabulary. When you really start drawing freehand, you will have an armory of, at your disposal. Besides, I also analyzed the arrangements of petals of these three roses. Then I came up with some general rules of thumb, which will help me draw and paint freehand later on. So now I will be sharing the rules of thumb that I come up with with you. Rule number one, each petal grows from the center. I'm referring to the center at the bottom, not at the top. So the petals grow from here, not here. With this in mind, you will draw the whole flower in perspective 
end you will know how to place the, um, the, the pedals and the angle of each pedal. Rule number two, the pedals around the center would form a pentagon. But of course you don't really draw a regular pentagon, otherwise uh, the flower would look stiff. So in here you see that uh, number five uh, goes further back and in here uh, number one two goes in front and uh, number five is almost vertical. And in here one two and number three goes to the front and four five. By the way, there may be some tiny petals in the center and you don't have to number every single one of them. Just like there are many tiny uh, ruffles, uh, tiny petals here, and also here, and also here. You just scribble in. Rule number three that is very important. The petals, especially those at the front, are placed or arranged more or less like tri triangles like this one one two three and when i numbered the, those at the back and go back to the front again nine ten eleven and nine ten flank number one to form a triangle and so are nine ten eleven and then number twelve thirteen and fourteen and then number 15, 16, and 17, so on and so forth. And uh, they are similar for the, two, the other two roses. But you can see pattern number 1, 11, 14, and 17, they don't align strictly. So each time you have to turn each set of uh, rose, uh, petals, I mean the, the, the set of three, uh, you have to turn, uh, each time you have to turn the set uh, clockwise and then anti-clockwise for the next set. So you can draw like this, one, two, three, or one, two, three, and then one, two, three again, and then one, two, three again like so and this goes the same for this flower that I just drew. Rule number four, the petals flanking the center petal look pretty um, narrow and vertical like this one and this one and also 12. I've seen some people paint or draw the outer petals or reaching petals like this. Just like what we drew when we were small. So instead of this, you should draw like this. So these are the center and the reaching petals should be like this. Rule number five, some petals overlap one another. Take uh, this photo, number seven and number eight overlap, almost overlap. And um, like here, number six, seven and eight, they pretty much overlap. These are the minor nuances that make the flower look organic. When you start drawing, draw a circle first as the flower is more or less a circle. This also gives you a guideline how far the petals can extend. Having said that, don't draw too round. Let me explain what I meant. So this is uh, my practice board. And uh, I drew this flower within two minutes after I did a lot of practicing and after I memorized uh, the position of the uh, petals. Or I better use this photo to show more clearly. So there are wedges of gaps between 
each layer of petals, especially when you look uh, from the side and also look at the petals around both sides. So that goes back to rule number one. The petals grow from the center of the uh, of the pad uh, of the rose so you see here this petal it links to the center here not there so you shouldn't draw the petal like this right otherwise the petal would look like growing from here so when you have the the rule number one in mind you will draw the um, the petals more um, in perspective. When you draw from memory, you can add or reduce petals here and there. And you can see here that uh, the petals on the right are more uh, upward growing and flatter on the left. And that would make the flower uh, look more organic. Then I practice painting the three roses in this painting. As I have to reference uh, the light and darkness and also the color changes, so I had uh, the photos in front of me, but I also altered uh, the look of each flower a bit. Uh, I reduced some flower petals and I added some ruffles and folds here and there. And then I painted this one totally freehand and I finished it within two hours without referencing any photos. Now I can draw or paint roses with confidence. And I think I have grasped the new way of painting petals quite successfully. I mean, um, you no, know, um, painting, uh, drawing the, uh, painting the textures and uh, the ruffles and things like that but uh, which is an other issue not uh, something that i shared in this video before i wind up let me show you some other paintings that i uh, painted uh, in these couple of weeks that i used uh, the same technique of uh, painting the um, the petal textures like this one and this one and I also had uh, another uh, tissue box uh, that I painted with this same, same technique but uh, that tissue box uh, was already sold so I can only show you the photos I hope you liked my sharing today and uh, start practicing and see how it goes so i'll see you in the next video bye